we are going to combine sections 2 and 3 in chapter 2 into one video, adding and subtracting rational numbers. Here's the good news. Your key idea is that you're going to use the exact same rules for the signs as you did for integers. Example number one, find the sum or difference. So let's look at example A. Negative 8 thirds plus 5 sixths. Well, the first thing you have to do is find a least common denominator. You have to find a common denominator. In this case, it's 6. So we do negative, and then if you times by 2, times by 2, this is just review, negative 16 sixths plus 5 sixths. We know the denominator stays the same, so now we do negative 16 plus 5. Well, since negative 16 and 5 are opposite signs, we subtract them and take the sign of the bigger absolute value. So we subtract the two numbers, 16 minus 5 is 11, and since we have more negatives, it's going to be negative 11 sixths. Now, a lot of students think that negative 11 sixths is not in simplified form because it's not as an improper, I'm sorry, it's an improper fraction and not a mixed number. An improper fraction, as long as you simplified by the common factor, it's simplified. You can leave your answer as negative 11 sixths. If you want to write it as a mixed number, as negative 1 and 5 sixths, you can but you can also leave it as negative 11 sixths. Example B, negative four and one seventh minus a negative six sevenths. The first thing you should note is that anytime you have a minus and a negative, that's just a plus. So we have negative four and one seventh plus six sevenths. The next thing I would do is I always like to change them into improper fractions. You do not have to do this, but I like doing it like this. So negative 4 and 1 seventh as an improper fraction, 7 times 4 plus 1, that gives you negative 29 sevenths plus 6 sevenths. We already have a common denominator. So now negative 29 plus 6, different signs, so I subtract them. That gives me negative 23 sevenths. You can leave that as your answer. Or negative 23 sevenths, seven goes into 23 three times. So it would also be negative three and two sevenths if you wanted to write it as a mixed number. Example number two. The table shows the annual profits in billions of dollars of a financial company from 2008 to 2012. Which statement best describes the profit over the five year period? So if we're looking at each of these numbers, a negative is a loss, a positive is a gain. So we just want to add them together. So the first year, 2008, the company lost $1.7 billion. Then they lost $4.75 billion. Then they gained $1.7. They gained $0.85 billion and then gained 3.6 billion. If you remember from the rules that we had in the last chapter, it stated, add the negatives, add the positives. If they have the same sign, add them together. So here we have a negative, here we have a negative. Negative 1.7 and negative 4.75. They are the same sign. We are going to add them together. So that would give you negative 6.45 billion. Now if we add the positives together, 1.7 plus 8.5, I'm sorry, 0.85 plus 3.6, you get 6.15 billion. Now they are different signs, we subtract them, we have more negatives, so our answer is gonna be negative, and that would give us 0 0.3 billion. Now that's a loss. So we have a loss of 0.3 billion. Well, 0.3 billion is 300 million. So our answer would be a loss of 300 million. Now one last thing, some of you may notice this, but when we were combining this step right here, 
you could have looked at this negative 1.7 billion and this positive 1.7 billion and crossed them out and then just combined the last two numbers. That would absolutely work as well. So there are multiple ways to do the same problem. Example number three, evaluate 2x plus y when x is one fourth and y is negative three halves. So remember when you evaluate something, you take the value of what those letters are and you plug them in. So we would have two times x, x is one fourth plus y and y is negative three halves. So two times a fourth, that gives us two fourths, which is one half, plus a negative three halves. Since they all already have a common denominator, we have a denominator of two, so now all we do is one plus negative three, or just one minus three. One minus three is negative two, and negative two divided by two gives us an answer of negative one. Example four, find the distance between two numbers on a number line. Okay, so let's look at these two numbers. Find the distance. Find the distance means we have to figure out what the distance between two and one third and negative two and two thirds is. The first thing we're gonna do is just subtract. Two and one third minus negative two and two thirds. Finding the distance means we're subtracting one amount from the other. We know that a negative and a negative is a positive. So two and one third plus two and two thirds. If you want to change them to mixed numbers, I'm sorry, improper fractions, you can. I'm just going to leave them like this. Two plus two is four. We already have a common denominator. One third plus two thirds is three thirds. Three thirds is really just one. So four and one, that gives us five. Now, once again, you could have taken these and changed two and one third to three times two is six plus one is seven thirds. And this six plus two is eight thirds. Seven thirds plus eight thirds is 15 thirds. And 15 thirds is equal to five. So either way, you would have gotten the same answer. But let's say you didn't take two and one third minus two and two thirds. You switched them around. Negative two and two thirds minus two and one third. Let's try this. A negative, I'm gonna change them to three times two is six plus two be negative eight thirds minus three times two plus one is negative seven thirds. They're the same sign, so we're gonna add them together. Negative eight and a negative seven give me a negative 15. So that gives me negative 15 thirds, and that gives me negative five. Now wait a minute, I get the same answer. What do we forget? Because we are representing distance, can the distance of something ever be negative? No. Distance is always representation, represented by absolute value. So if you take the absolute value, your answer on both of these will give you five. Therefore, the distance, no matter which way you do it, between those two numbers would be five. Our final example. In the water, the bottom of a boat is two and one-tenth feet below the surface. And the top of the boat is eight and seven-tenths feet above it. Towed on a trailer, the bottom of the boat is 1.3 above the ground. Can the boat and the trailer pass under the bridge? Notice right here that our bridge has a clearance of 11 feet, 8 inches. The first thing we have to do is actually figure out the height of the boat. Now I'm going to make a picture. Now you don't have to do this, but if it helps you, then do it. So here's my boat. Now this is really a, a bad boat here. Here's my boat. Now this is looking at it from the front. Now in the water, so here's my water, the bottom of the boat is 2.1 feet below the surface. And the top of the boat is 8.7 feet above it. So I need to find the distance from here to here. Now you can subtract them. But 
here's what we got to look at. And we have two ways to do this. 8.7 above, 2.1 below. So 8.7 above would be positive. 2 and 1 tenth below would be negative. So we're going to subtract them to find the distance, which is the same thing as just adding them together. So we know the height of the boat is going to be equal to 10 and 8 tenths feet. That's the height of the boat. But towed on the trailer, the bottom of the boat is 1 and 3 feet above the ground. So then we have a trailer. So here's my boat again. Boat. This boat from top to bottom is 10.8 feet. If it's on a trailer, here's my trailer with wheels, really bad picture, that's okay. The trailer then, the bottom of the boat, is 1 and 3 tenths feet, or 1.3 feet above the ground. So now I have to add that together. So I have to add an additional 1.3 feet, because that's the trailer, onto the 10.8, which is the height of the boat. If you add that on, that gives you a total height of 12.1 feet. The clearance is 11 feet 8 inches. The trailer with the boat is 12.1 feet. Can the boat and trailer pass under the bridge? You would say no, it cannot pass because the height is greater than the clearance of the bridge.